Uh, I, it was a. Uh... Hey there, welcome to Science Fiction. I'm Salim Sutterwala, and I am normally joined by Carl Eames, and I will be joined by Carl Eames shortly. He just said to step aside for a moment. Um, but yeah, we have a pretty good show going on today. We, you guys should uh, enjoy it pretty well. It's uh, We're, we're going to update you guys on a lot of the new stuff that's happening with DC. Uh, James Gunn, just like about a week and a half ago, announced uh, a lot of changes that he is looking to make, um, or not the changes uh, that he's looking to make, but like the updates on what the changes are that they're going to be making in DC, uh, the extended universe. Uh, so we're going to be going over that. And then what we'll also be doing is uh, just a quick fast flake to uh, to start out, uh, oh, looks like Carl is uh, heading back here, so I'll, I'll give him a moment to uh, get back on the mic. Uh, hey, how's it going, man? Good evening, everyone. I'm sorry for the late uh, start from me, but what's going on? Not much, man. How was your uh, day? Pretty good? Um, yeah, it wasn't that bad of a day. Uh, I thought, you know, you know, uh, always uh, things could be better, things could be worse. But um, for a Thursday in February, decent work and, you know, a lot of rain. Uh, I got a free car wash, so that that's good. I don't mind that one. And then, uh, yeah, it, it was all right. Not a bad day. Nice, nice. Yeah, I had a pretty good day as well. Um, the rain didn't really hit me just because it was... I, did, I guess I, I just got lucky when in the morning when I left, it wasn't really raining. It was like wet out, but it probably had stopped. And then um, when I left, it wasn't raining either. So it just, I got lucky. Um, yeah. Because it's been with, raining with pretty that. much all day. <laughs> yeah. Um, I pretty much got lucky in avoiding the raindrops itself. So it was pretty good. Um, have you been, uh, I saw you started. Uh, making the Spider-Man, uh, putting together or uh, redoing the Spider-Man uh, action figure that you had? Uh, Spider-Girl, actually. Oh, Spider-Girl, okay. Yeah, yeah. So, yeah, I finished her last week, and I've already finished, um, I painted something yesterday, I should say, and uh, finished those up um one of which oh she fell over she's supposed to be standing up and stuff uh she's right here um this, this was a quick job but um she can barely see her but yeah okay nice uh let's, hold on. let's see so uh just a super quick one this is what it's supposed to look like okay rogue and this is what i oh, mean no, that's jean gray yeah, uh, Phoenix. Yeah. Oh, you made her blonde? No, this is Emma Frost. Oh, okay. So you have Emma oh. Frost as the Phoenix. That is correct. Interesting. That's cool. 
So uh, this one uh, is going to be Rachel Summers later on. So I'm not doing it anytime soon, but it'll be Rachel Summers. And then I have the Emma Frost one. Uh, the idea is that I just want to change the head because the body is already done. So it's super easy. Um, I don't have to spend time painting the entire figure. It's just the head I'm worried about. So that's all I did. Nice. Um, and then the other ones I did. Uh, they're back behind me, but I don't feel like grabbing those. Those are full on jobs there. But um, yeah, um, I got something else to work on over the weekend. And then I'm actually taking a break from from making customs for a little bit after this one. Nice. Um, completely random, not related to uh, sci fi or the customs that you're making or anything like that. But I remember we had to we had talked about. Uh, like when we were talking about uh, Lightyear and we were talking about Pixar and Toy Story, did you see they announced that they're doing another Toy Story, a new one? I just saw that like an hour ago. Yeah. I was like, oh, okay. <laughs> I was like, I, I figured you and I talked about it. I was like, I doubt they're done with it. They'll do another one at some point. They'll announce this uh, because they were announcing a bunch of sequels. They're doing another Frozen. Uh, they're doing an In and Out 2, Inside Out 2. Um, there was another one that they were going to do. It was like four. It was Frozen, Inside Out, Toy Story, and then there was another one I can't remember on top of my head uh, that they're doing. This, they're doing like another movie too. Um, but yeah, it's, it was funny just seeing that. It'll be interesting uh, where they're gonna go with that Toy Story. But yeah, they're yeah, like they're like gonna... we were saying, whether or not they're gonna do Chris Evans again or go back to uh, Tim. Well, Allen. I imagine. Yeah, I imagine if they're doing just a Toy Story, if it's like an ongoing, it's probably going to be Tim Allen, I would imagine. Mm -hmm. uh, but we'll see. We'll find out. Um, but yeah, uh, I, had, I had before you had hopped back on, I was kind of telling uh, the audience what we we're going to be talking about today um, as far as the DC uh, re reveal uh, James Gunn had a couple, like a week and a half ago, or maybe it was two weeks, I can't remember exactly. Might have been a week and a half. In that time frame, anyways. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, we're going to be going over that, and then we do have a quick fast flick that's not DC related. It is Spider Man related. Um. So we'll we'll start that. So if you want to go ahead and play our little fast flick. Certainly. So, spider, uh, so, uh, an Amazon, yeah. So, Spider Man Noir live action series is at works in Amazon, which is exclusive to Amazon. Um, now, Spider Man Noir, you guys will remember, was in the uh, Sony, um, across the Spider Verse, one of the characters in Sony across the Spider Verse. Uh, so Sony is doing uh, essentially uh, a live action. Excuse me, sorry, a live yeah, a live action series based on uh, Spider Noir, and like Spider Noir is a pretty popular character. Uh, so you know it'll be interesting. I mean, I'm I'm pretty interested to see how they go with it. I'm excited about it. Like I'm not excited about a lot of Sony projects, but. Um, it's interesting to me that it's going to be on Amazon as opposed to, I guess I don't know where else Sony would do it if it's a, it's a show. But yeah, yeah I, I for Sony, that. they don't have a streaming service, so yeah. that's, they got to do Netflix or Amazon yeah, yeah. or something like that. Um, but yeah, it was it was very it was very interesting that you know uh, that was announced, and like I said, you know they're they're consistently been expanding the spider man stuff in general so i'm i'm assuming this will have you know um connection not connections i should say it's probably going to be its own universe in a sense because obviously it is a separate universe because it's not peter parker uh mm -hmm. it's going to be uh the main uh, spider man uh, in this universe but um I'm guessing it's not going to have any connections to even like the cartoon or like the Spider-Man 
um, little you bad Sinister Six universe that they're trying to do it as well. That's what I'm guessing. Uh, what are your thoughts on on the Spider Noir and what they're what do you think they're probably going to connect it with or have any connections at all if they will? Um, I mean, at, uh, one um, perspective is, I mean, personally, just more of a, I feel like the oversaturation of of Spider-Man content. Um, uh, that's exactly what Sony's been trying to do and trying to, you know, make as much money off of the Spider-Man IP as they possibly can and milk it and have their own universe going mm-hmm. on, like I said, with the Sinister Six and all that stuff. Like, it's to be expected at the same time like i don't know if i'm like should be mad at them or like for wanting to do this but at the same time it's like yeah that's a cool one to do um but like do i really want that like do we need to keep going down the rabbit hole of spider Spider man to give it everything because i do like i'm like i'm not i'm not burnt out on comic book stuff or I don't know, maybe I'm burnt on a Spider-Man stuff. Maybe that's what it is. Um, because I'd still want to see, you know, whatever's hitting Disney Plus. I still want to hit, you know, like Blade and I still want to see Secret Wars. I still want to see Across the Spider-Verse. I still want to see whatever, you know, the DC stuff we're talking about. So I'm not burnt on a comic book content, but I guess maybe it's Spider-Man. It's like, okay, I don't want it to be um so watered down uh and stretched out because i feel like it's gonna eventually just not be a quality product uh which kind of already is with sony but um it, it all really depends on at the end of the day um writers you know how good the, the, the screenwriting is and directors um and then in this case we're probably going to get another Spider-Man, another actor to play Spider-Man, because I wouldn't expect Tom Holland, Andrew Garfield, or no, yeah. Tobey Maguire to be any of these uh, Spider-Man noir. So yeah, because they're not going to be Peter Parker. One. Yeah, it's not yeah. going to be Peter Parker. So um, it's a completely different uh, person that's going to be playing Spider-Man for sure. Mm-hmm. Um, and it's Sony, so it's not obviously while while Tom Holland is. Uh, Spider-Man is owned by Sony. They still have left Tom Holland only in the MCU, so uh, they haven't uh, separated Tom Holland anyway. So that that wouldn't make any. It would be completely confusing if somehow Tom Holland was Spider-Man nor could make any sense at all. Uh, it'll be so good, but I mean, not that Sony tries to make sense in a lot of what they do, but still, uh, that would be even a little bit, bit out there um, as far as that's concerned. But yeah, it'll be it'll be interesting. I'm like, I'm 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 fine with Spider Man as is. Like Spider Man, care like like if they did like a Miles Morales or like um, another version of Spider Man, I'm fine with that. The what what's annoying is I'm trying to add add these villains that um that don't really work without Sp- a, a Spider Man. Like, I don't care if it's Peter Parker or whoever playing Spider-Man, you know. Uh, obviously, there's so many of Spider-Gwen. Uh, there's obviously a lot of talk to Miles Morales. Um, there's so many v- different um, sp- people that play Spider-Man across various universes. But, yeah, that that's fine. It's just about the fact that they have all these villains them trying to make them all uh, anti- Anti heroes and and make mm-hmm. them into a a uh, you know a Sinister Six esque Spider Man where I'm not sure where they're going with it like a team up like what are they teaming up for are they teaming up to become like good guys and um, because obviously the reason the Sinister Six team up is because they're trying to take down Spider Man so yeah that that's the annoying part and that and that's what I guess I would say I'm, I'm burnt out on is the it's a stupid Spider-Man m- movies that are have nothing to do with, but with, with not nothing to do, but like have Spider-Man himself is not in those movies. So I'm, I'll be interested to see that just because it's actually Spider-Man, you know? Um, and it's cool too, because it's, it's, it's not something um, 
we've seen in the comic in recent at least comic uh comic book movies like it's like that you know that old timely film like a 50s or whatever probably 30s it's like like 20s or 30s or something yeah like that. 20 or 30s yeah the type of the style it is or whatever as a spider-man noir a style uh that they they might do so uh yeah that'll be interesting but uh yeah any final thoughts as we move on to our no, main just, uh, just your um just like to your point um it it would actually make more sense than I think about it um, for them to stop doing all of these villain centered projects, right? And there's two Sinister, Six, Sinister Six is like what they want. Like I get it, but how do you do that without Spider Man? It would yeah. make more sense to actually focus on other Spider Man and yeah. give them like twenty ninety nine could be an amazing right. series. Um, right. Spider-Man Noir makes sense, and you don't have to worry about Tom Holland or, or Toby or Andrew or whatever. You can cast right. a whole nother, have it be in its own separate universe, and, and that- I would rather watch that than to watch um, uh, what's this, Craven the Hunter or uh, Madam Web or right. any right. of these other things. No, hundred percent. That's my and that's my. Uh... Yeah, that is my whole issue with yeah the whole Spider Universe thingy. Um, it's not Spider Man. It's the same way with like. It's the same way with uh, Batman related stuff. Like I wish. I mean, I guess a lot of people like Gotham. I never really got wanted to watch it. Like I want if, I, if there's a Batman show, I want Batman to be in it. And I'm right. I don't know how they'll do with. I mean, we're going to talk about the other DC stuff soon, but with the Matt Reeves uh, universe where they're going to do a bunch of um, Batman, Patterson, uh, uh, Robert Pattinson uh, related Batman uh, shows and universes and, and things like that, that's not gonna, that's not going to have Batman in it. Uh, so that'll be interesting, I suppose. But I, I prefer if you're going to do something with Batman, have Batman in it. Like, it's kind of like tough to not have Batman involved in some way or matter. Um, but we'll see. Um, mm-hmm. One thing I, you know, not really kind of related, you know, it, it's funny to think about like, obviously. So the big two biggest comic book characters in the world for the most, for, for most people are Superman and Batman, right? Um, they're the more popular, most popular, I, I should say at least. Um, and, and generally, whenever you see those comic book rankings, those two are generally the top two. And then you see like Spider Man or like Wolverine number four or whatever have you. Um, it's always been interesting to me. Like we've seen so many variations of like actual Superman shows, like include like involving Clark Kent Superman, but mm-hmm. and we've never the only live action Batman show we've seen that's involved Batman. It's that old 60s Adam West one. And I that's why I've always been curious to me why no one's ever uh, attempted to do a Batman sh- TV show. And especially with the, like, now in, in, in today's age where, uh, like, HBO Max, for example, has a TV series, like, this is the service uh, series, and they, they're able to put money into, like, it's not, they don't, they don't have those budget restrictions like a network would. Um, like a CW or whatever that might have a you know some kind of budget constraint. Um, I'm surprised that they don't. We haven't seen a live action Batman TV show. From like, what I've heard, that they actually wanted to do one around the same time the Christopher Nolan Batman series uh, movies are coming out. But Christopher Nolan specifically told DC to not do. Uh, a CV series because he didn't want it to distract from his movies and he didn't want the CV show to water down uh, the image of Batman because at, at that point when Batman Begins was coming out there hadn't been a Batman movie since Batman and Robin and, and the Batman image had already been um, at a point where people were not like positive on, on Batman on live action because of, you know, bat nipples and everything. Yeah. Um, so he wanted the, to, them to not 
overdo it. He's like, I'm going to, you know, basically fix it for, for what it's worth. But he didn't want he didn't want a live action. And they kind of just stuck by that because, you know, he had three movies and those took a while to come out. And I think that idea of we shouldn't oversaturate Batman on TV and we shouldn't put him on TV because he's a movie character. He's big screen. He's, you know, blockbuster. I mean, we don't Superman. We don't that. Yeah. Superman. The big screen. But, but big Superman screen. had already between that point, because that during that, uh, like the nineties, whatever there's, uh, Superman and, 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 and Lois or whatever it was called. the, the Dean Kane Superman, which was a proven TV commodity, and then the Smallville. So it was already we already have Superman on TV. We've done this before. We can do it again. It's a, it's proven people would watch it. it. We can make it successful. But Batman on TV, like you said, hadn't happened until the, since the the seventies. And then when Christopher Nolan said, "Uh, uh-uh, uh, no, we're not we're not doing that. Don't do that." They just kind of kept the idea that Batman shouldn't be on TV. Yeah, I, I mean, I, I feel like they, they would be better off. Like, I mean, it's not, probably too late now, but if if the Matt Reeves stuff were a TV series instead, like an online, like they could do, like especially especially because they want to do like the younger Batman, so they can actually do like you know like a three season series or something like that, showing him. As he's a younger Batman and maturing, and how he's going to become eventually the Dark Knight or whatever. Instead of the movie that we got you, rather yeah, than the series. Yeah. yeah, I think that would have been cool, especially because if he wants to do other TV series or or uh, or, or like uh, the streaming series, I think that would have been cooler. But oh well, we'll see. Like I said, we'll see what happens. Um, but yeah, let's let's move on into our uh, topic, our main topic. Uh, so the DC, obviously, um, um, James Gunn announced a bunch of things that we we're going to do. Now, we do have the video that we we that he released. So what we're going to do is we're not going to play the entire video for like from the beginning. What we're going to do is we're going to play parts of the video that, as he explains the things that DC is going to be doing. Um, and then we'll stop and then discuss it so the first thing we're going to discuss is gods and monsters uh so carl if you want to play um that portion or start well, of the video or whatever well the the gods and monsters part of it is that is chapter one it's just think of it as like phase one phase two phase three with mcu um so chapter one with dc studios uh, is gods and monsters so that's that's the whole video and that's what this entire phase is it's a chapter um so but yeah we're, we'll just go ahead and give that a go and come back Let's... hey everybody i'm james gunn i'm the co-ceo of dc studios so as many of you know dc has been disconnected in film and television for a long time and it's one of you know, our jobs, mine and Peter's, is to come in and make sure the DCU is connected in film, television, gaming, and animation. That the characters are consistent, played by the same actors, and it works within one story. And if something is outside of that, like Matt Reeves' Batman or Todd Phillips' Joker or Teen Titans Go, that it is clearly labeled as DC Elseworld, outside of the mainstream DCU continuity. Now, all right, so I I want to stop okay. you there. Um, so yeah, so as we um, was already gods and monsters. About. Yeah, so gods and monsters. Uh, DC actually made an animated uh, movie of this uh, comic book. Um, it's out there available, but essentially, it's it's a completely different universe where uh, the superheroes are not what they normally are. So, like Superman in this case. Uh, is a son of Zod, uh, raised by illegal immigrants. Uh, Wonder Woman is like a new Genesis exile. And then Batman is a vampire. So that's what Gods and Monsters is. Now, we'll find out if that's exactly what James Gunn is going to do, because obviously sometimes they don't do exactly. Because I know, for example, with other things that he's going to be talking about, he's not going to take exact adaptations of that. But at least... Of what I know about gods and monsters, that's what um, it is. So, 
that should be interesting as far as what he ends up doing um uh with 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 uh with that first adaption yeah i don't think he's literally taking the, the st- storyline of gods and monsters i think it's just calling this part of their their implementation of the dc uh universe gods and monsters because they're focusing on literal the gods and and and, and, like gods in a metaphorical sense not the actual gods of dc so gods being like superman and batman and wonder woman and green lantern like they are like godlike compared to a regular person but then also monsters because we get swamp thing in there and then we're getting some other monster like characters that's all i don't think it's like so connected like the storyline but uh, I wanted to pause here on this part because him him saying specifically as we were discussing um, like Christopher uh, Reeves or Matt Reeves, excuse me, Batman and then the Joker movie with the Joaquin Phoenix are specifically going to be considered Elseworld stories and they will continue to be uh, made. They're not going to be tied into this continuity uh, that's going to be starting off uh you know relatively soon uh, all of those movies are on the outside but still continuing on as their own separate thing and they're going to be labeled as elseworld so they were they didn't have that labeling before like when you watch joker it just said dc black label uh, or dc black or whatever it was called and then same thing with batman but now like going forward it'll actually say Elseworlds on all of those all of those movies that are not a part of this new continuity. Uh, yeah, definitely. It's it's uh, it's going to be uh, fun for, for sure. Um, did you have any other thoughts on Gods and Monsters? No, we're just going to keep on going from here. Okay. Peter and I have gotten pretty lucky in terms of the four projects that are coming out over the next year. First, we have Shazam, Fury of the Gods. Shazam has always been off kind of in his own part of the DCU, so he connects very well. That moves directly into The Flash, a fantastic movie that I really love that resets the entire DC universe. Then to move into Blue Beetle, a fantastic film about a kid who's a marvelous part of the DCU, and then into Aquaman 2, which leads directly into our next few projects, which I'm going to tell you. All right, so that's a good stop part there. Um, So yeah, so all of the movies that he said, Shazam, The Flash, Blue Beetle, and Aquaman are all coming out this year, as, as you know, according to them. So hopefully, no more delays. Uh, Shazam's coming out next month, and that's going to be, as far as we know, relatively untouched. Although we know there's definitely some last minute changes because it's not going to be connected to their ongoing future universe. Uh, the Flash being a very important movie uh to reset said current universe into what it will be in the future um which actually makes me more curious because of blue beetle coming out after the flash um sometime like in the spring or in the summer or the fall and then uh aquaman in the winter time of this year which he said leads directly into the new dc uh universe so i'm very curious on how that's going to happen and what most likely changes because it's going to happen after flashpoint after the flash movie but like how uh is really more of how like how unless it's like a prequel or something like that or it's supposed to happen before the flashpoint movie and it's just you know we just have to remember that or like i'm curious on how that's going to work with Blue Beetle and uh, and Aquaman. Uh, yeah, it's. Uh, I don't know, I don't know. Like, I'm I'm wondering if the because obviously we've talked so many about times about the Flash and how they're going to uh, essentially reset the universe or the timeline or with the whatever. And I'm wondering if like Blue Beetle and Aquaman are gonna be while they're coming out after 
uh, the Flash. I wonder if that's going to be timeline wise, it's going to be before the Flash. Um, and then they're just going to be um, obviously wiped out after um, after the Flash movie, and then they do, and then from there on, they're going to go into the new DC stuff. Um, yeah, I think uh, I, I think like it's it's you know the obviously Blue Beetle is a brand new uh, character being being bought into this side of of DC, so it's going to be kind of weird, you know, what they do with that character as far as uh, how they proceed with it. Um, but I'm guessing that's what it might be that they're going to, uh, while that is going to be there, even though like those movies are coming out afterwards, um, they're going to reset the timeline to, uh, they're going to have that timeline why sorry, come out set before flash. thing i forgot to mention um it was we were talking about the christopher um that's christopher matthew reese i always say that matthew reese batman uh the batman 2 the next movie um is actually coming out they already have a release date for it um it is supposed to be hidden theaters october 3rd 2025 so the batman part 2 will be coming out in about two and a half years from now um, so at some point in between now and then, I would assume we'd get that that Penguin uh, miniseries on HBO Max as well, which was not mentioned today or not mentioned in this uh, in this uh, announcement. But um, in the very least, the next time we see Robert Pattinson as Batman would be October 2025. Um, and then secondly, going back to this current topic that we're talking about here with Ezra Miller, uh, as we've also discussed many, many times that uh, it's surprising to see Ezra Miller um, not being recast and, and still coming back as as a Flash. But um, both uh, Gunn and Safran have both been very supportive of Ezra Miller and, uh, and all of their because they've been going through like some some therapy uh so they're completely as they quote saying completely committed to their recovery um but it doesn't mean that i mean this is like a resetting of the move of, of the universe um it doesn't mean that ezra miller will come back as the flash after the movie is over with it's just more of they are committed to the movie coming out as is um they do think and james gunn has said that it, the, the flashpoint movie is probably the greatest superhero movie of all time in his words. Um, and then whether or not Ezra Miller comes back as the flash after that in the new, the new DC universe is something to be told, but like with um, Henry Cavill, um, Henry Cavill's not going to be coming back as Superman, but that doesn't mean that they won't be working with Henry Cavill in the future. So they could continue to work with Ezra Miller in some other capacity uh, that is not the Flash, uh, but we'll see. Yeah, I think there are like different rumors about bringing Henry Cavill back as someone else, and then um, bringing uh, even um, Jason Momoa uh, back as uh, Lobo um, and into like the into the new universe. So uh, that's a character that's a, he's like a bounty hunter um, character that. Uh, as an, as like an alien bounty hunter, essentially. Um, so yeah, um, that's that should be interesting. Um, so let, let's move on into our next into the next part. Tell you about now. So Peter and I, along with a group of very talented writers, have started to map out an eight to ten year plan of what DC Studios will be in film, television, and gaming. This first chapter is called Gods and Monsters. Now this, what I'm about to tell you, is a part of the first chapter. It's not the entire first chapter. The first project is Creature Commandos. Creature Commandos is an animated series. I've written all the episodes. Something we're gonna do that's a little bit different at DC is we're gonna have characters move into animation, out of animation, usually having the same actor play their voice as who plays them in live action. The next project... Okay, so first one uh, up uh like i said creature commandos uh personally 
This is the first time I ever heard those two words uh, put together uh, when he said that. Uh, so I've never heard of this group, and but we can tell from just off of this. One, it's an animated series, so this will be an HBO Max thing. Um, and secondly, uh, you can see very much inspired like creatures like Frankenstein's monster. Uh, you can see, uh, you know, all these kind of tropey things like alien and stuff like that uh, type of characters, but um a dc spin on them so i again i don't know anything about the group uh but james gunn has personally written all of the episodes for this series so we can expect his level of comedy and, and storytelling and so on um and even just from this image like this creature on the right i felt like okay i'm like i'm already immediately identifying guardians of the galaxy type vibes uh from this because it feels like i'm looking at like the guardians of the galaxy but just as uh tropey monsters of you know of of the past like and I, I don't mind that whatsoever um and it seems like it's like right up james gunn's alley uh stuff completely out of left field something that um he's super into but not a lot of people know about that he's got the opportunity to um to to make something for and then maybe this could be a really big series and it'd be a big hit but like i said when guardians of the galaxy was announced nobody knew who that was like who who that group was who those characters were and it, it was very niche it was very small uh amount of people that actually read guardians of the galaxy books and then by the time the movie came out you know guardians are as big as they are so uh, we'll see um how that works out for this group and then also the last thing he said that um they're going to try to have the voice actors who is playing these characters on the anime series play the same characters in the live action so at some point these characters will cross over into live action and they'll still have the same continuity as what this animated series is and still have the same actors uh playing them in in live action form which i find interesting um because it's usually the other way around um you start with live action and then go to animated um so yeah they'll have to like kind of cast with all of that in mind to make sure that these actors because again voice acting and and physically live action acting don't necessarily go hand in hand some those are completely different skill sets so you'll have to have people that are capable of both um and then they are willing to do both Right. Um, so yeah, it's, it's uh, it'll be interesting. Like as far as what time it's set in, because in the comics, I was doing some research on it. It's this is like a um, set in the Second World War during that time frame, and it's basically a, a project called Project M, where it's established to a secret laboratory to create um, ways to f fight like the Nazis. So they create uh they do something where they're creating like like where it says like the werewolf the mummy uh frankenstein and things like that um frankenstein's monsters vampires i don't i'm, I'm sorry i'm not maybe not the mummy but like you're the werewolf or vampire the frankenstein's monster um and then they're joined by all these few different uh characters as well but that's what that it's supposed to be in the comics, but then I also read that this is supposed to be, it's kind of like a spinoff of Peacemaker. Um, so not sure what exactly, like what, what the, uh, what the, if it's going to be like a period piece or if it's just going to be modernized more so in the modern day and they're going to do a different storyline. And, and not sorry, not that this isn't going to be a positive. Now this isn't going to be a spinoff of Peacemaker. Uh, so maybe they yeah, they will just stick to um, what uh, what it's supposed to be uh, a period piece that's set in the in, in the forties uh, during the World War Second World War War World War. Um, but yeah, uh, will be interesting as far as all the things that you said as far as getting the right people that can do both of the live action and the voiceover uh, as well. All right, let's go ahead and start the next part. Next up is Waller. This is a story of Amanda Waller played by Viola Davis. 
Viola Davis is going to team up with members of Team Peacemaker. And this is a story that's been created by Crystal Henry, who did Watchmen, and Jeremy Carver, who created the Doom Patrol. It is a fantastic story that's out of this world, and I can't wait for people to see it. All right. Uh, next up is Viola Davis coming back as uh, Amanda Waller, which was one, I think, of if we're talking about all time great castings in in comic book movies and stuff like that. You have your Robert Downey Jr.'s as Iron Man and your J.K. Simmons as uh, J. Jonah Jameson. And I think Viola Davis as uh, Amanda Waller is right there with them personally. Uh, one of the best castings that DC's made, casting decisions, getting her, and she's been amazing. But she's been in a very limited role um within suicide squad and a little bit of like she was in black adam for a bit and then of course in uh, peacemaker for a bit but actually getting her her own series is a fantastic call in my opinion so one confirming that she's coming back and that she's going to be played by the same actress that she was before and before the uh uh the change into what they're, you know, with James Gunn and, and Peter Safran. So I find that very, very interesting. And again, just getting ahead and saying, yes, Viola Davis is absolutely coming back. Why, why recast that actress when she's already the best actress? Um, but yeah, focusing on uh, Amanda Waller, uh, giving her screen time, giving her a, a people a reason to care about this, this character. Cause for what it's worth, again, outside of, Suicide Squad, we don't really see a lot of Amanda Waller. So giving her the series will will help a lot of people that are very casual um, to this character uh, understand why she's so important, why she's so badass, and and, and why um, people are uh, actually love her as a character in general. Again, she's not like she's not a hero, you know, but she she is very, very, very influential in DC. Yeah, exactly. Um, I always compare to her to uh, a more um, a more mean version of Nick Fury. <laughs> that's what that's what essentially she is, because um, she she does she does a lot more like she doesn't she 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 doesn't have as more of a line that she won't cross. Mm-hmm. Uh, and obviously, like the whole Suicide Squad thing, kind of shows it that she doesn't care about killing people off, like villains off or whatever. If to do her bidding, if you will. Um, so yeah, um, now this is supposed to be the spinoff for Peacemaker, and I miss. I had my notes, and I kind of mixed up my notes here. So this is supposed to be the spinoff for uh, for Peacemaker. Uh, it makes sense because obviously she was in Peacemaker, so. Um, it'll be interesting as far as maybe because obviously they have like her daughter in Peacemaker. Uh, so it'll be interesting if it's something in that dynamic. I'm not sure if they're going to try to like make her more of a sympathetic character or continue her uh, being like this um, complete, you know, villain esque character in a sense. Uh, but yeah. Yeah, I'd imagine it would give us a reason as to why she's the way she is like to get to the point because she's not just uh like i said she's not a hero but she's obviously motivated by something and uh why is she manipulating all of these heroes in particular why can't she do things by the book why uh why she chooses to um disregard all of these criminals like she's like uh like i said nick fury but she's like the punisher and nick fury were one character yeah in a sense yeah in a sense but yeah i mean yeah i guess i mean i feel like i feel like even not even that because like the punisher only goes after like bad people like she doesn't care <laughs> like she'll she'll go after like superman <laughs> um if she you know she's about like from what i gather for the most part she's a very like she's about like protecting the us government um, so 
it's basically that's what she because a lot of things she a lot of secret projects that she does are are run by like like you know the deep underground super government projects uh that she's part of and she's usually leading those but yeah that, that that's gonna be an interesting series as well um so let's move on uh, with the next one okay next up is the big one the true beginning of the dcu this is called Superman Legacy. This is being written by me. I'm in the middle of it. I'm having a great time doing it. And Superman will be released into theaters July 11th, 2025. Okay, the next thing. All right, so Superman Legacy is the next movie. Uh, the first movie, the first true movie, the first start of this new DC universe. And... Uh, like you said, it's going to come out July 11th, 2025, which actually would be sooner than that, uh, like a couple months earlier than the Batman 2 with Matthew Reeves' Batman. So it'll come out a few months before then. Um, but again, all the, of the things that we said, the Creature Commandos and the Amanda Waller series, those will come out before this Superman movie. But officially starting off this universe will be this Superman movie. Uh, we still don't have any idea of who's going to be playing Superman. It's still early on. He said he's halfway through writing the movie. Um, he may, Chris or James Gunn may be the director of the movie. I guess he hasn't decided that yet. Uh, it could be someone else. Um, but yeah, there's there's a whole lot of you know controversy with the whole Henry Cavill situation and so on. But you know, this being a younger Superman. Um, and this is not being and it's not an origin movie, right? Because we've seen that um, uh, a million times before. We're going the whole uh, Spider-Man route where, you know, the MCU decided to not kill Uncle Ben again, even though he's already dead. We we're not going to go through another Batman origin and going through the alley and seeing Martha and Thomas Wayne. Uh, we're not doing that again. So we're not going to go through the whole Krypton exploding uh, angle. Uh, for half of a movie we're just going to go kind of jump right in and maybe allude to his past and stuff like that but it will still be a younger superman on screen uh yeah it, it's you know so th that for sure then like they you know they emphasize it's not going to be showing how it, he he got his power or not got his powers how where he's come from um and how, as far as it, who like how he you know comes around to becoming deciding to become Superman and all that things like that. Um, but yeah, the, the, again, this, le the legacy, it's, it's interesting because I'm wondering if they're going to kind of go back because in the comic books, there's, there's a 12 issue. Um, the essentially Superman legacy is a, is a 12 issue. I was not 12 issue. I, should, I don't remember. No, it is. Yeah. It's a 12 part series. Uh, based off of this all-star Superman. Um, and it's kind of like um, showing like the older version of, of of Superman essentially where like you have like the characters, full characters uh, surrounding him with like Lois Lane, uh, Jimmy Olsen, um, um, Perry White and like obviously him being like the, the, in the Daily Planet being a news reporter like actually showing him being a news reporter as Clark Kent um, you know like Crypto the Super Dog uh, the Fortress of Solitude um, all that kind of stuff and obviously Lex Luthor is part of that as well and that that's essentially a, a big part of um, and, and then All-Star Superman like he gets like exposed to like sun the sun and and to uh, critical levels was kind of he has like this radiation that kind of um, makes his powers like uh, like um, expand to it like I said like to critical levels essentially so uh, it'll be interesting to see what they go around that and again maybe they're just calling it that and there's also thought that there's not going to be the exact adaptation of that all-star superman but yeah um it should be fun as far as um as far as what he goes about doing it i mean there's like different quotes from 
from gone about it. So there's like ones like, I mean, I really love the idea of Superman. He's like a big galoot. He's a farm boy from Kansas who's very idealistic. His greatest weakness is that he'll never kill anybody. Doesn't want to hurt a living soul. And I like that sort of innate goodness in Superman as he, his defining characteristic. So right from that quote, we see that it's going to be so much different from Snyder. It's not going to be a, like such a dark version. It's going to be a very light version of who Superman is. So uh, yeah, that should be uh, it should be very interesting as far as uh, what 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 he ends up doing with that. And as far as who they cast him as, yeah, he they're not close to obviously casting because uh, obviously you said that they're only halfway through the script. Got it. All right. Next up is uh, Green Lantern. Let's go ahead and talk about that. Is a big premiere HBO television series called lanterns this is a story of a couple of green lanterns john stewart and hal jordan and we have a few other lanterns peppered in there but this is really a terrestrial based tv show which is almost like true detective with a couple of green lanterns who are space cops watching over precinct earth in it they discover a terrifying mystery that ties into our larger story of the dcu next is a big all righty well back to uh green lanterns so, uh, again, it's another live action. This will be HBO Max thing. Uh, we've been hearing rumors and, and the desire, I guess, from DC to do a, a Green Lantern based show for years, um, like a long, long time ago during the Snyder era, even that they were rumoring uh, about a, a Green Lantern show. And because um, they wanted to separate themselves from that whole Ryan Reynolds um movie that happened and that disaster that it was but they still wanted to you know feature the green lanterns and they did to you know snyder's credit they did have them in the justice league movie um kind of alluded to and like oh they they are out there they exist we just don't have hal jordan or anyone else uh featured in the dc uh eu just yet but uh we're finally getting around to them hal jordan's gonna be back and we're gonna get a live action John Stewart, so I'm pretty pumped about that. Um, so, and then, like you said, there'll be other Green Lanterns as well. So, if you're a Green Lantern fan, you probably you might see uh, Kyle Rayner. You might see um, darn, what's the uh, other guy's name? I forget. Um, the Irish one. You remember? Uh, yeah, he's um, Guy Gardner. There you go. Yeah, yeah. People are yeah. joking that Chris Pratt should play him. Oh well, yeah. Chris Pratt should voice at least someone. He can he can be <laughs> Kilowog. He can voice Kilowog. That would be great. Yeah, there because there's rumors that yeah, obviously he's gonna bring over a bunch of like his MCU uh, people and um, and Chris Pratt being one of the people that's most obviously notable in a sense um, that he would want to bring over. Um, yeah. Well, yeah. So, um, we're, we're gonna jump back into the Green Lantern things. I've never been much of a Green Lantern fan, admittedly, or like any of the, the stuff, but I know he has a lot, or they do have a lot of uh, fans, and uh, the ring is quite capable. Like, I, I'm kind of just like on the outside looking in, of, like, I'm fascinated, but not strongly enough interested to actually go out on my way to start reading Green Lantern stuff. Um, particularly, I'm not a like I'm not into Hal Jordan, but I like Kyle Rayner and I like John Stewart. So um, I'm very interested in seeing what they do with this. And what's really interesting with my very limited Green Lantern knowledge is that I do know that one John Stewart is a Green Lantern, but I see yellow on this uh picture and this and i know about the different colored rings in the green lantern core uh i know that there is a yellow ring and that is the opposite of the green one so uh relatively opposite of the green one so i i'm curious as to why john stewart has a yellow oh, yeah. lantern ring as opposed to a green lantern one yeah because um, the yellow one is uh obviously the dark or like the bad guy the yellow matter Mm -hmm. uh, what's his face? I forget the main villain's name. Um, Sinestro. Yeah, Sinestro. He ends up, you know, trying to because he used to be a Green Lantern, mm -hmm. and then he goes and gets the uh, the the yellow matter ring, if you will, 
um, to because he's kind of tired of like the the guardians and all that stuff and yeah that's yeah, interesting so the the green lantern core the green ring is for willpower um mm-hmm. uh, so you have to have like strong willpower to very strong willpower and hal jordan is just like canonically has the strongest willpower of like all of the green lantern core although you know batman's kind of really strong with the willpower too but um and then all of the other if you're using the green lantern ring you said you just have strong willpower the yellow ring is for fear and that right. is um well, sinestro uh in the yellow lantern core is for fear the red one the red lantern core is i think it's anger or something like that or hate uh, something along that line. The pink ring is for love. Um, and then there's blue, which I don't remember. And black is, I think is death. Um, and white, which would be the opposite of that. I'm not sure the actual term that they use for white lantern core. And orange is um, like, that's, the one that's like uh, there's only one member of I forget his name of it, but he's he's like very possessive and he d- doesn't like sharing things. But I forget the exact name of it. But there's difference. There's a lantern spectrum. Um, so this being yellow, that's actually kind of a big deal um, as to and kind of a hint of what they're going to get at for that Green Lantern series. Yeah, for sure. And like I said, I don't know a lot about the background of Green Lantern either. So, um, yeah, it'll be it'll be fun to see what they go with it. Alrighty. Big movie called The Authority. The Authority is a passion project of mine. It's based on the marvelous Wildstorm characters. We are now bringing into the DCU and will interact with all of our primary DCU characters. The Authority are a group of superheroes who think the world is broken and they want to fix it by any means necessary. I think it's a very different look at superheroes. We're doing a television series. All right. Um, all right. So The Authority. Um, again, another group that I don't know anything about, but I have heard of, like in my many years of reading comic books, I've at least heard of them. I've heard the name, but I don't know anything about them at all. Um, however, like just based off of the image here, and also as someone that I mean, and I don't know if you know more about them, uh, Salim, but I know you've been watching The Boys. And I know you're a fan of that series on on Amazon. This picture reminds me of the boys, as if like, especially uh, given his the way he describes it. I kind of just like this is just kind of like DC's version of the boys, where things might go a little, you know, a little bit more anti-hero sort of approach on things. But uh, I could be completely wrong. But that's just my impression of. Uh, what I heard and what I see. So again, I don't know anything about these characters. Um, I don't know how strongly they're going to be influencing uh, the DC universe going forward, but he said they're going to interact with everyone uh, going forward. Yeah, so like the the authority, they're not uh, exactly like good guys. Uh, like they want to make the world a better place. So that's not like the boys. Like the boys are show like they'll super soups as complex in a sense that you know most are pretty kind of abuse their powers uh to for their own personal gain um but the authority like they do want to make the world a better place but they feel like the ends justify the means so you know they'll do whatever they think is right um in a sense like same and the same kind of you know when we talk about shazam in a sense like his brand of justice um you know they you know, they're ready to use their power, like the authorities ready to use the power to control the government, um, you know, dispose of the enemy and and, and pre- which prejudice, uh, extreme prejudice, and, you know, kind of be like the, the, um, uh, what do you call it? The, the judge, jury, and executioner, if you will, of, of sorts. So that's what essentially uh, the authority is. So that's, that's definitely uh, different than, you know, your average comic book where, you know, the superheroes have some kind of line that they won't cut across for the most part. 
Uh, these group of superheroes obviously don't have that line. Alrighty, I do see like Union Jack on this uh, character a um, little off on the right here. So I'm um, assuming they're British. I don't again. I don't even know the individual names of these characters. I do see your Angel Wings on back there, so she probably is like an angel uh, like character. Um, hopefully she has more than one power than just flying like Warren Worthington because he's pretty useless. Um, and then I see this Halo-esque aura around the one in the middle top as well. So I, I think there's going to be some symbolism going on as well. Um, a lot of people with no shoes on as well. It's kind of weird, but maybe that's how they get down and the authority with no shoes. All right, uh, let's go ahead and move on to the next one. Series called Paradise Lost. Paradise Lost is a story of Paradise Island, usually known as Themyscira, which is the birthplace of Wonder Woman. It's almost like Game of Thrones with Westeros, but with all of the inhabitants of Paradise Island. The introduction. All right, uh, next up, as in Paradise Island, like I said, um, this will happen before Wonder Woman is born. So. I don't expect Wonder Woman to show up in the series unless they have her as a baby or something like that, or they decide to go on for several years and has several seasons and do a time skip or something like that. But either way, I don't expect Wonder Woman herself um, to be in the series since it's before she's born. So that means it should have Hippolyta, uh, her mother, and uh, in it, and then we'll we'll see how that goes. I'm actually pretty excited for this just because there could be some really cool, awesome fights. Like it's just, a, again, an army of, of women that are and warriors and they, they going to fight. They just, that's what they do. Um, so uh, I think this should be a pretty cool series. It's just, um, again, you know, game of Thrones type of thing. I've never watched game of Thrones, but I know people like it. So hopefully it's uh, going to be a pretty exciting series. I think of all of the, the live action series, I think this one's probably my most uh, anticipated one. Uh, yeah, essentially that's what it's supposed to be. It's 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 like Game Lost, Paradise Lost is Game of Thrones, but with the Amazons instead. Um, yeah, it's going to be <clears throat> obviously not. Excuse me, I apologize. Obviously, it's not going to include uh, Wonder Woman, as you said. It's probably going to be like much, much, much time before. Uh, she's there. Um, so, yeah, it, it, it's it's um, it's going to be like, obviously, a lot of pa a lot of massive battles It's going to be like po po political drama esque, like people trying to be like the leaders of various things. Um, so, yeah, it, it should be it should be a, an, an exciting show. Um Especially if they do it like, like you said, if they do it in a sense like Game of Thrones, where it's more gritty and uh, a lot more like a very mature audience type of show. I do wonder if um, they might take this as an opportunity to flush out more Wonder Woman characters without having it be Wonder Woman and then like giving them a spotlight here as opposed to waiting for a Wonder Woman movie. So what I mean is like, uh, and then not going off of direct canons, so it'd be its own thing. So like Nubia, who is her sister, Wonder Woman's sister, but when would they ever do Nubia in a live action movie? Not to say that they wouldn't ever or they shouldn't, but I think an opportunity to go in that direction with Nubia or Donna Troy or um, any of those characters that are like the Wonder Woman side characters or support characters that are normally in her her books. I don't see them getting to the all of them in her live action movies. So why why not throw them in this series and not again not going off of canon you know not going off of canon ages and relationships and stuff. They can have their own. Uh, continuity in this series but throw them here just so that they can get some kind of uh, love and attention right alrighty next up of the DCU's Batman is the brave and the bold 
The Brave and the Bold is the story of Batman and his actual son, Damian Wayne. This is based on Grant Morrison's great comic book run. Damian Wayne is my favorite Robin. He's a little assassin who Batman tries to get in line. And so this is the story of the two of them and the beginning of sort of the Bat family in the DCU. Next up. All right, the brave and the bold. Um, pretty exciting uh, hearing this, but again, uh, a new Batman movie. Um, this will be not Robert Pattinson Batman. It will be someone else, most likely not Ben Affleck either, um, playing Batman, but they will absolutely be focusing and having their own Batman in this new uh, DC universe with Damian Wayne as Robin. So I've seen a lot of... Um, a lot of def divisiveness over this because people are like, oh, they're just skipping all of the other Robins and going straight to Damian Wayne. Well, oh, that's stupid or stuff like, stuff like that. And we have like a, a lot of people are jumping the gun on this um, one because even like Zack Snyder with the previous Batman with B Ben Affleck, the first one, we never got a Batman movie. Two, when he first showed up in Zack Snyder, it was Batman v Superman. He was already old. He had already lost Robin, or at least one of them was killed by the Joker. And and so on. We don't know anything about Batgirl in that universe. Um, but yeah, like things had already happened, but people accepted that right away. So now with this one, we're going straight to Damian Wayne, and people are upset about it being Damian and not... Uh, uh was it jason todd or uh dick grayson or um tim drake or whatever like why would that be a problem and it doesn't mean that he was the first robin either you know um, right. all of those other robins could have still have happened but we're just jumping off with this universe with this story with robin and and so on and i think it's a good call too because Again, he is Robin right now in the comics. So if anyone were to watch this movie and then go straight to the comic book store and say, I want more Damian Wayne stuff, it wouldn't be that old. It wouldn't be having to read something from 1962 or 1950 or you know 1980 just to see what the story was. It would be something that came out in the last 10 years. So I think uh, going with Damian... Uh, is, is a good call and he's a very liked well-liked robin but the other divisive thing is that he's uh, they picked a storyline where he's like the worst version of damian wayne like because he's such like a, a moody little brat um and not as cool as he is right now but we'll see oh uh, yeah it's, and, and it makes sense because they're, they're trying to put a big separation between the pad pattinson um, Batman age wise and and uh, the new Batman like what they're gonna do I would imagine um, just because like I wouldn't be surprised if the Pattinson Batman eventually has a Robin like uh, Dick Grayson or something shows up at some point um, but this one it, he's gonna be obviously old, like probably in his like forties I would imagine um, or something like that to be old enough to have fathered a ten or thirteen year old boy. Essentially, and obviously that ten or thirteen year boy fathers with Talia Al Ghul, uh, from who was obviously uh, the daughter of Raz Al Ghul, uh, and who's the leader of the League of Assass Assassins. Um, so that's I would imagine that's a reason why. But it's also rumored that in this in this universe, like it's not only going to be Damon Wayne. Um, Robin, the, the entire Bat family is going to be there, so you're going to see like like Jason Todd uh, eventually comes back and is a different character, obviously. Um, you, I think you see um, obviously Dick Grayson eventually becomes Nightwing. Um, you see Barbara Gordon, who's Batgirl, uh, and so forth. So various different, they're going to have they're gonna have like the entire bad family involved in this, so that's gonna be, um, yeah, that's gonna be a big part of uh, of this as well. So that's that should be interesting. And obviously, the Pattinson ones don't have ability yet to have those characters because the bad family comes much later, like as he's going through his his thing. Because obviously, you know, 
with the Robin and all the different characters that decide to become part of the Bat family. But it's obviously like Stephanie Brown and Sandra Kane and all these other um, characters that are involved. So yeah, uh, that's that's going to be a, obviously a couple of major differences between the Pattinson one and well, Matt Reeves world version versus what he's going to do in here. Um, and yeah, it'll be interesting as far as who they end up casting uh, for the role as well. Yeah, I'm more. I'm that's probably the most exciting aspect of it is the Bat Family because. Again, we we see again with um, Michael Keaton's Batman. There was just Batman, right? Mm -hmm. No one else. And then Batman Forever introduced Robin, right? But he's still kind of a small part of that movie. Batman and Robin had Robin, but and introduced Batgirl, and then that was the last time we've seen like a real Bat family on the big screen Um, because Christopher Nolan completely sidestep that entire aspect and uh matthew reeves uh which i disagree i don't think he's going to do robin or um uh, at all but i mean he could we don't know what the future plans are but i don't think it's going to happen um so i think my only hope or our only hope is going to be uh, what they're doing with uh the brave and the bold and how they go forward with damien and hopefully introduce like you know nightwing and and batgirl in that in that movie and then have them spin out whether it be a tv series or another movie or something like that in the future because i'd love to see both batgirl and uh nightwing uh actually get some time on on their own and be well-developed characters uh, apart from batman and then go do a big batman movie too yep all right Moving on. It's up as a TV series called Booster Gold. Booster Gold is one of comics' really popular cult heroes. He is a fascinating guy. He's a loser from the future who uses future technology to come back to present day and become a superhero so that people will love him. It is basically the superhero story of imposter syndrome on an HBO Max series. One of my... All right. Booster Gold. Um, so, yeah, pretty much the, that's... What he said about Booster Gold is all that I know about him. I know a lot yeah. of people uh, love this character, and um, he, that uh, was I another character. He's really funny. Yeah, remember Chris Pratt <laughs> that he made? So I like, everyone was mad about that. Like you better not pick Chris Pratt because he's like a obviously like a lot of a lot of like the casual people don't know who Booster Gold is, but like comic book readers, he's like a huge you know fan favorite among comic readers. Yeah, I, I like just on the outside looking in. Again, I'm not again never read a Booster Gold comic. I assume he's really funny, but mm-hmm. just just even off this picture alone, Chris Pratt would be a great actual cast in my <laughs> opinion. That I think he would be perfect. Uh, well, not necessarily perfect. Like there aren't, aren't any other ca- actors out there that could be Booster Gold, but I think uh, a great fit for Chris Pratt if he were to jump over to DC, I think right. it would be Booster Gold because they are. The way he does Star Lord it would be very similar to how I perceive Booster Gold. But again, having not ever read Booster Gold or even seen him on TV, because I believe he's been on some of the CW shows, um, I, I can't be like, oh, super adamant or uh, uh, like I'm not super knowledgeable on the character. So there could be it could be completely miscast in my mind, and there's someone else better. But in general, like he's like he said, he is literally from the future, and he's using relatively basic technology from the future, but it is advanced technology by today's standards, and he's using that to be a superhero. It's just so people could love him and i'm pretty yeah. sure that's like how he was introduced i don't think he he's i think he's a little bit more complex now but i don't again have personal knowledge um beyond what literally what james gunn just said yeah and he basically what he does is he knows like historically like things that are going to happen so he he kind of does like uh goes there like like the publicly High publicly uh, publicity heroics through like the nods of historic events. So he'll using that future technology. He tries to like, like I know like this train is going to crash here, for example, or something like that. So I'm going to go and save the people here. Or I know that this bank is going to get robbed. So 
I'm going to go there and stuff like that, to my knowledge, that he basically tries to do uh, to and essentially tries to uh, be viewed as a superhero. Um, and then obviously it'll be interesting. Obviously it'll be like character development as far as him being like a selfish person and learning like what it means to be an actual hero. Um, like Booster Gold, the, like, so I have never read the comic book as well, but he is in the, you know, that uh, the Justice League uh, animated series. Um, he is in, I want to say season four um, of the, the Justice League Unlimited uh, animated series. Um, so, yeah, he's, uh, yeah. So it'll be interesting, yeah, to see what they, where they go with that. My favorite comic book series from last year was Tom King's run on Supergirl, Woman of Tomorrow. And so we're going to turn that into a big science fiction epic film. Now, Superman is a guy who was sent to Earth and raised by loving parents, where Supergirl in this story, she is a character who was raised on a chunk of Krypton. She watched everybody around her perish in some terrible way. So she's a much more jaded character. And that brings me to Swamp. All right, so back to Supergirl before we finish that up. Um, Supergirl has been on the big screen before, but most people don't remember it, and if they do remember it, they will tell you how terrible of a movie it was uh, back in the 80s. So this will be her first time back on the big screen in 40-plus years. Um, i never seen that Supergirl movie, but I did watch the first season of the Supergirl series when it was on CBS. Um, so a lot of people may not even remember that it started on CBS and then got moved uh, season two and then on um, to the CW. I started watching that series and I thought it was okay, but it wasn't really captivated on that, uh, the TV series. And I kind of dropped it after watching a little bit of season two. Um, it lasted for much longer than I had thought. So it must have improved because uh, I thought it was just kind of going down and in, in, into the dumpster. So I assume it improved over time. Um, and then eventually it crossed over with the flash and green, green arrow and all of that stuff. Um, but this is a, still a new, a fresh start for Supergirl. Um, again, adapting the Tom King woman of tomorrow comic book series. Um, that came out recently. So I hope I have high hopes for it. I do hope they have some good casting, um, some good direction and stuff like that. Um, we're still probably pretty far away because this is a pretty long uh, list of, of films already, which aren't even starting until 2025. So this is probably like a, a 2029 or maybe 2030, maybe even further out uh, than that movie. But uh we're she's back though in the very least we're gonna see her um and i think that one reason also we're gonna see her in um live action on film is because i think they're building up to uh crisis on infinite earth sort of thing and she's a very important character in that uh storyline which um I'm not gonna spoil that story but i don't think it's gonna end the same way for supergirl as it did in that uh, comic book series but i do think that it's important for them to get Supergirl on screen um, on the big screen, because I think they're going to build up to like the Avengers in game sort of situation where everyone's there, everyone's involved. And that sort of thing is crisis on infinite earth. Right. And um, obviously with Supergirl, she's, you know, she's much different from Superman. Like as far as, as James, Gun James Gunn mentions, um, like she, when she comes here f first, she, her life she's kind of like confused because she's supposed to be she's supposed to be sent to Earth along with her cousin Clark, who's a baby, right? And right. something happens where she gets stuck in some kind of 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 thing where she she kind of gets stuck in time in a sense, and all these years pass, and Clark grows up, you know, and he, he, Clark Kent goes up, becomes Superman, and all that stuff, and then all of a sudden she arrives at Earth, and she's just kind of like, 
doesn't know what to do because Clark Kent is supposed to be a baby. Like uh, Kal-El, Kal-El is supposed to be a baby. Where's my baby cousin? I'm supposed to protect Kal-El. Kal-El. And she's basically gets, you know, she's confused on what she, she's supposed to do and who she's supposed to be, is essentially. And she's lost in that regard. So that's going to be interesting. Now, what, you know, it's funny, like they had a year ago, I want to say in February of this time last year, not a year, sorry, two years ago, February of two years ago, they had cast somebody to play Supergirl, um, Sasha K- Kelly. And I'm guessing, obviously, that's going to be kaput now, unless they do keep her. I don't know. Um, I'm not. I'm not sure if what they're gonna, you know, what their thoughts are gonna be on on recasting. I'm, and especially since this movie is gonna be so far out, uh, I'm assuming they'll recast her. But they never really talked about. What talking about for the, the Flash movie, Supergirl. Yeah. Well, was it is it in the Flash? Because I thought she was gonna be in. Uh, they were gonna do another standalone Supergirl as well. Well, I'm not sure. I'm not familiar with the actress, so I don't know if that's the same one that's in the soup, uh, the Flash movie. Yeah, her name is Sasha Cal, Kelly or something like that. Is she is she going to be still in the Flash? Yeah, she's in the Flash movie. Yeah, this is the one. Oh, okay. Because I've never seen. Well, I guess I, they haven't shown her in any of the trailers. Well, I guess maybe we'll find out when they drop the trailer. Supposedly, it's supposed to come out during the Super Bowl, right? Um, oh. that I don't know, but I'm pretty sure she's been because there's that one shot, um, uh, where you see Ezra Miller, um, oh, yeah. and, and his, and his uh, the Flash yeah. costume, like the one that, um, Ben Affleck Batman gives the Flash, oh, so the I'm, future I'm, one, I'm and then the other one in the side, and then yeah, Supergirl's on the other side. IMDb has suit her cast as in a Supergirl movie, but it's set in development. So maybe they'll keep her. Well, my MDB is like kind of. I I know. So. I'm just saying. <laughs> maybe yeah. they will. I'm just. I'm not. I'm not saying this is for sure going to happen. Yeah. I'm just saying maybe that's what they're going to do. So it'll be interesting. Alrighty. Um, thing. The last thing we're going to talk about a very dark horror story in the origins of the monster who is Swamp Thing. And although it's totally outside of the rest of the DCU, it will still feed into the rest of the stories. Anyway, those... All right. So, um, Swamp Thing is the last thing there. So it's not... uh, James Gunn earlier said that this is the first chapter of the DC movies and and the universe going forward, the, the, the movies and film and the TV and the games and stuff. Not necessarily everything, so there will be other stuff that pops up. There's probably just stuff that's going to be a surprise for later, uh, or things that haven't been finalized that might happen after this Swamp Thing. Uh, but for what is worth, this is going to be a Swamp Thing movie. Um, gosh, do, I can't even remember if there ever was a Swamp Thing movie. I know we have the Swamp Thing series uh, that but only had one season and I never got a chance to watch. Um, but I can't recall if there's ever been a Swamp Thing movie, um, but it's still kind of like horror based in a way, uh, as he was saying, but still will tie into, I guess it'll still tie because he didn't say it was Elseworld or anything like that. So it'll tie into everything else that they're doing, but still be its own kind of separate thing because it's going to have so much horror elements. I, my assumption is that it'll be so, so many horror elements to it. They don't want it to be like Superman and Batman crossing over all the time and having all this sort of thing. They just kind of want it to be its own thing that is just like on a corner of the same planet same universe of what's happening with the rest of the justice league characters right um so he is they had an announcement i think today that uh james mango mangold is gonna be is in talks to uh play uh this one thing um i don't know if you saw that i had emailed you a picture uh, yes it is i don't you have it yet mm-hmm. but yeah they, they they had like that quick update that he's gonna be in he's in talks to play it and he also had tweeted uh posted something on his instagram 
Um, so it looks like it's pretty much going to happen um, as far as uh, as far as him being the Swan Thing. All right. Yeah, and I don't. I, I know the only thing I know about Swamp Thing is that um, he has, which is a, a DC thing that I, I don't know the full terminology explainers yet. But I knew about the green, like as much as I know about the red, and like the red is like for animals, for like uh, vixen and stuff, where they have animal-like powers, and uh, Swamp Thing has. The green, or not the green, or but is connected to the green, which would be same thing like poison ivy, and they have the the plant based, uh, planetary type powers and stuff like that. Um, but he's incredibly powerful, just like everyone else in DC is. They're all DC characters are just stupid powerful, but uh, Swamp Thing is incredibly powerful and is connected basically to the, the planet itself and all of the the plant life and things like that. So. Um, that is what I understand of of this character. Um, doesn't get involved. Like I don't think you all ever see a Justice League with Swamp Thing on him. I think he's a little too concerned about the planet to to care about day to day crime um, in Metropolis. But um, still, super cool character. Right. Um, yeah, he's basically very like. Um, like conscious of like you know life uh like like the earth and things like that as far as like uh the things that affect uh nature in a sense so um and i think like it's kind of like so i don't remember because there used to be that one tv show the 80s one swamp thing um and i remember I used to watch that but i can't remember it too much. I don't remember a lot of like what happens in that, um, in that in that series. But yeah, it, it should be it should be fun. Um, I think, and it's supposed to be a little darker as well compared to, um, compared to some of the other uh, other comic books in general. So yeah, it should be uh, it should be a fun fun adaption and how they go about it. All right, what is the risk? There's only about 50 seconds left of this. Those are the stories that I can tell you about right now. I've loved the DC characters since I was a child. They're incredibly important to me. I knew that this was a a once-in-a-lifetime opportunity to do something very different. One of the things that's very important for me in all of these movies and TV series is that the director's vision and the vision of the writers and all of the creators is unique and something special storytelling is always king. That's all that matters to us. And I want to be true to those stories. I want to be true to you guys and really give you something different than you've ever seen before. Anyway, thank you, everybody. I appreciate you watching. All right, we'll we'll cut them off right there. But, um, of course, again, that's not the full slate, but things to notice, uh, things that are notable. Don't see any Black Adam there. Don't see any, uh, you know, Dwayne Rock Johnson uh, on that slate. Yeah, I uh, think he's not. He's not going to be. I think they're done likely. with him. Most likely, um, which is interesting enough. But I also don't see Shazam, right? Like right. it's not. And now again, the movie still has to come out. They're probably going to see how it does, performance wise. Honestly, I'm not exa- at all excited for watching the uh, the Fury of the Gods, and like most people, uh, I've seen that it's like a consensus. They like, like we'll go see it, like out of obligation, like you and I and other people that have to do stuff like this. But I think most casual people are not like really interested in this movie. Um, so we'll, we'll see what they what they do with that. Uh, no Wonder Woman on this docket. Uh, they do have the the Paradise Lo- uh, Island or Lost or whatever it's called. But no Wonder Woman directly uh, uh, going forward. So uh, that's going to be very interesting. Uh, whenever we get news again, they could be like two years from now and announce another Wonder Woman movie and it'd be recasting or same same actress or whatever. But uh, who knows? Uh, also, again, Aquaman, all these, all the big hitters in DC, like some of them are there and some of them are not. So um, it'll, it'll take some time before we get around to figuring out what exactly they have 
uh, plans on doing. Uh, if again, if Gods and Monsters has a overall story narrative like uh, Phase One and Phase Two, Phase Three for Marvel and building up to something uh, with like Thanos, so in DC, like I said, I, I feel that what they would be building up to is Crisis on Infinite Earths uh, or something very similar to that. So Anti Monitor, uh, Dark Side. Um, who else? I, I I can't quite think of all of the big hitting DC villains that would require everyone to be there um, outside of that. Um, but yeah, it, it's going to be a lot better, hopefully. At least I'm optimistic that it'll be a lot better than what the Snyder run was. Yep. Um, yeah, I mean, it'll probably be more like but well, more well put together, for sure, um, as far as what they do and how they connect the movies and the universe and everything like that. Uh, but yeah, that's uh, that's pretty much a wrap for us. Any final thoughts as we get out of here? Um, you know, I think I had something I wanted to talk about real quick, but I forgot about it. So it wasn't important, apparently. So we'll just go ahead and move on. Fair enough. Yeah, so yeah, that's a wrap. Obviously, please check out all our... Uh, previous episodes that you may have missed on the Barroom Network. Uh, you can find that on YouTube and on audio uh, platform, which obviously is all your major and minor podcast platforms concerned. Check out everything that the Barroom has to offer, cover all of Chicago sports, um, all of the depressing Chicago sports, because Chicago sports is a, a hell hole uh, that all the teams are bad. <laughs> Hopefully the Bears won't be bad, but we'll see uh, eventually. But, yeah, the Bulls are bad. The Sox are depressing. Cubs are maybe pointing a little bit towards the um, – it was pointing up a little bit. They've, they've probably done a little bit more exciting moves. Um, but still, check them out. You know, misery loves company. We should all be miserable together so we can support each other in, in the Chicago in – the, in the life that is uh, of a Chicago sports fan. Um, but, you know, yeah, definitely, especially with the draft still coming up, in April, check out a lot of our Bears content because you're going to want to learn a lot about the drafts with the draft on tap, uh, all the different prospects. I never understand how people know about all these different prospects because there's like a million of them and how they can break all these guys down, especially with so many different – I mean, like there's seven rounds in NFL in an NFL draft and having to know every, you know, everyone that you want to take and then obviously the – then the undrafted people like, oh man, this guy was supposed to go in the fourth round, but he went undrafted somehow. Uh, the Bears should go get him. Um, all these different names and things like that, prospects, you should definitely check out Draft on Tap to learn all in depth about uh, all the different things the Bears could do. But yeah, that's it for us uh, for today. So uh, for Carl Ames and myself, we'll see you guys next time. All right, have a great night, everyone. <laughs>